The brand new M1 iMacs are going on sale later this week. They come with a new design inside and out for the biggest change in iMacs in years. Besides the seven colors to choose from, there are also three different models and a few things to consider. So in this video, I'm going to go over which iMac I'm going to buy and why. Hey, I'm Jerry. And like so many, I've been waiting a while for new iMacs running Apple Silicon and sporting a new design. Last week, Apple did surprise us with new entry-level iMacs sporting seven colors and running the M1 chip that almost everyone can agree is an amazing processor in Macs. I'm pretty excited to actually get one of these new computers. So besides telling you which iMac I plan to purchase and why, I also wanna tell you why maybe you should consider getting one of these new iMacs and what questions I still have about them. Let me just start with why you may want to consider one of these new iMacs. And the first reason is the new design. Yes, it's true. I had a reaction video about the new iMacs expressing disappointment with the new design, but I don't hate it. I'm actually using a 2020 27 inch iMac as my main desktop right now. And I bought it less than a month ago because I really wanted to go back to the all-in-one experience. As you can see, the designs are actually pretty similar in their appearance from the front, which is what you're going to see most of the time when you're looking at your iMac. The new 24 inch iMac sports a slightly smaller chin and bezels, and except for the new white color on the bezels and lack of an Apple logo on the chin, they look almost identical. And that's fine. I don't hate the previous iMac design and I don't hate the new one, except maybe the bezel color. It just wasn't the design that so many were hoping for. But the design is new and refreshed. The whole computer is 11 and a half millimeters deep without the stand, comes in six colors plus silver and weighs less than 10 pounds. This computer is an engineering feat. Think about it, an entire computer with the performance of the M1 and a 24 inch retina display in a package that is just barely thicker than an Apple watch. I mean, that's pretty gosh darn impressive. Whether or not I think a slightly different design would be better. The second reason you should consider getting the new iMac is the built-in display. Using an all-in-one iMac as a desktop computer is just a better experience than trying to use a laptop or Mac mini with an external display. I've done a lot of testing with different Macs and different displays and different video adapters, and there are a lot of problems using Macs with third-party displays. Issues like weird wake from sleep resolution changes to pink squares randomly showing up on the screen. The iMac has not exhibited those strange display issues in my usage and testing, and is by far the most seamless experience when using a Mac on a desktop. Even if you wanna go the route of using a similar spec Mac mini with an external display, I spent tens of hours researching displays, trying to find something that matches the iMac display, and there's just nothing out there that compares in the overall package of brightness, resolution, color accuracy, and quality control, not to even mention the extra features like True Tone. You can trust the iMac displays to be very accurate right out of the box for things like photo and video editing. And the third reason to consider a new iMac is just, it's the total package. Inside that 24 inch iMac, you get that performance screen we just mentioned, the M1, what looks to be a decent set of speakers with spatial audio, a 1080p camera with the smarts to make you look better, studio quality mics for video and internet calls, and did I mention the M1? Yeah, that same eight core M1 processor that's inside the recent MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and Mac Mini. It's incredibly fast and fluid for everything I do from Word docs to remote server management and even video editing. The M1 iMac will be more than enough desktop to cover the needs of most people with everything just built in. Now let's look at the three starting points of the new iMacs and determine which one I'll be ordering. Starting at 1299 US, you will get the new 24 inch iMac with a four and a half K retina display, eight core CPU, seven core GPU, 256 gigabytes of internal SSD and eight gigabytes of RAM. You will also get the new color matching magic keyboard and magic mouse in the box. Now this baseline iMac only comes with two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the back for connecting anything from secondary displays to third party mouse dongles, audio interfaces, external discs, or anything else that you might need to connect. You will be able to configure the keyboard to get Touch ID built in and upgrade the mouse to the Magic Trackpad if you want. You also have the option of upgrading that power adapter to include that crazy new ethernet connection along with storage and memory, presumably. Unfortunately, we don't know the prices for any of the configurable options at this time, but we can assume that both the storage upgrade to 512 gigabytes and the RAM upgrade to 16 gigabytes would be 200 like it is on the other M1 Macs. For $200 more than the base 24 inch iMac, you can get the mid-level package 
which includes the power adapter with Ethernet, the additional GPU core, the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID built in, and you get two additional 10 gigabit per second USB-C ports along with the pair of Thunderbolt 3 ports. In my mind, the $200 difference between the base and the mid-tier options is absolutely worth the upgrade for Ethernet, USB-C ports, and Touch ID on the Magic Keyboard. I'll consider the extra GPU core a bonus. At that $1499 price for the mid-tier iMac, you still get the same 256 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM on the M1. Now jumping up to the high-end 24-inch iMac for $1699, you get everything that is in the mid-tier, including the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID, Ethernet-equipped power brick, eight gigs of RAM, and the internal SSD is actually increased to 512 gigabytes. As for which one I will get out of the three, I think that the low-end 24-inch iMac is off the table for how I use a computer. I feel like the two Thunderbolt 3 ports is a bit restrictive, and I need to have the option to connect additional devices as needed. The 7-core GPU doesn't really offend me, as even my GPU-heavy tasks like Final Cut Pro show very little difference between the 7- and 8-core GPUs. I also prefer to use Ethernet whenever possible, and although I can add the Ethernet-enabled power brick to the base model, I also want the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID built in, so for those reasons, I think that I just can't go with the lower end model. When it comes to mid-tier versus high-tier, the only difference, as we discussed, was the bumping of the SSD from 256 gigabytes up to 512 gigabytes of storage for an extra $200. In my opinion, that $200 is better spent adding the additional eight gigabytes of RAM to the mid-tier, and I can buy external storage to attach to the iMac at a better price. I can go with something speedy like the 10 gigabits per second Samsung T7 SSD. It's a super tiny SSD drive that is plenty fast for most things, comes in a couple of nice colors, and you can get a full terabyte for around $160. If you want even faster, you can get the Samsung X5, which is a Thunderbolt 3 SSD that can get over 2,500 megabytes per second. An X5 with one terabyte will run around $350, but whichever one you choose, they will be plenty fast and cost a whole lot less than buying storage from Apple. So yep, I think the mid-tier iMac with 16 gigs of RAM is the one I will choose. And lastly, which color will I buy? I said in the previous video, I wasn't a fan of the pastel colors on the front, and honestly, if I were buying a new iMac to have for a few years, I would simply go with the silver model. Silver reduces the risk of fad colors going out of style or clashing with future room colors. Since I won't be buying the 24 inch iMac as my main computer, I will be going with one of the new colors, but I'm not quite sure which one yet. So if you have any suggestions, let me know below. And don't forget that the lower end model has a few less options for colors. So. Now that I pretty much know which iMac I'll be buying, I do still have a couple of questions about the new iMacs and can't wait to get my hands on it to test it out. The first question I have is, how does the Ethernet connection work? Are there pins on the power adapter that connect it to an Ethernet controller directly when the magnetic cable on the back is connected? Or is there a USB or Thunderbolt Ethernet adapter built in behind the display? I don't know, but I'm sure we'll be able to see it just in the system report on the Mac when I get it. Next, I wanna know how good the speakers really are. Normally, the bigger the speaker, the more air they can move and the more sound they produce. MacBooks and iPads do a crazy good job in their form factor to produce loud, good quality sound, but even the new six speaker system is going to be smaller than what's in the 27 inch iMac, I believe. So I'm really curious to see how well they perform. Also, I'm curious about the hinge design on the new iMac and how stiff it is. With such a light computer, I could see the hinge being on the looser side, which would allow the screen to move without worrying about the computer tipping but it could also be a little stiffer than we imagined, like the iPad Magic Keyboard hinge, which the iMac obviously takes design cues from. On the other hand, Apple hinges are usually one of the best and it will probably end up just being about perfect. My last question about the new iMac is the instant wake screen. I wanna see how instant on it really is. Can an iMac really wake up a full 24 inch display just as fast as an iPad or an iPhone? I sure hope so and I really wanna try it. So that's it. I think if you're in the market for a desktop computer, then this 24 inch iMac will fit the bill for many people. Although it doesn't have all of the design changes I had hoped for, this new iMac will sure impress with the new colors and thinness that will make you look twice even before you boot the thing up and experience the unassuming power of the M1 chip. I'll be going with the mid-tier option of the new iMac to get the eight core GPU, Ethernet, two additional USB-C ports, and the Magic Keyboard with Touch ID. I'll also add eight gigabytes of RAM for a total of 16 gigabytes, and I'll look for other options for external storage. As with all new things, I'm excited to test it out and see if my first impressions match my feelings when I actually get it. 
Let me know below what questions you have about the new IMAX and I'll see if I can answer them in the next video or down below. If you're interested in more reasons why an iMac makes a better desktop than using a MacBook, and you wanna see me predicting the Touch ID in the built-in keyboard, built-in Touch ID in the keyboard, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.